It's springtime here in the UK, which means the woodlands are finally beginning to show their colours. So I'm here in Breed High Woods in East Sussex, braving the April showers, to try and find the nation's favourite springtime flower, the bluebell. The native British bluebell, also known as common bluebell, wild hyacinth, fairy flower or woodbell, is, as you might imagine, native to the UK. Around half of the world's population is found in Britain, and one of the best places to find them is in ancient broadleaf forests like this one. Ancient woodland is an incredibly important habitat for plants and animals that don't exist anywhere else. Britain used to be covered in wild woods, but as people settled, they cleared the woodland to make room for agriculture and towns and cities. There are younger woodlands, but they haven't had time to develop the unique communities that are found here and nowhere else. Now, just 2.5% of the country is covered by ancient woodland. And actually, finding bluebells in your wood is a good sign that that wood is, in fact, ancient. Here we go, there are a few here. Lovely stuff. There's a cuckoo, can you hear that? Amazing. <laughs> Here we go, this is what we're looking for. I'm gonna be careful where I step. I think in a couple of weeks time, this is gonna be absolutely amazing. Can you see all the green, the sea of green? That sea is gonna turn blue. Okay, so I've been walking for a little while and I have just rounded the corner and spotted the most spectacular thing. So, here we go. A carpet of blue, bluebells, native English bluebells in the native habitat. This is absolutely beautiful and it smells amazing. So bluebells flower between April and May, and by flowering that early, they're taking advantage of the extra light on the forest floor before the leaves grow on the trees. They absolutely love these shady spots, and forests like these can have thousands or even millions of bulbs growing in this huge blue carpet. It's little wonder that woods like these have been linked to mythology, and in particular to dark fairy magic. They say that bluebell woods are woven with fairy enchantments designed to trap humans. Apparently, if you hear a bluebell ring, then you'll be visited by a dark fairy and will soon die. And if you pick one, which is illegal anyway, you could be led astray by fairies and be left to wander in the woods forever. Personally, I could think of worse things. The Victorians developed a language of flowers in which flowers had secret meanings. In this, bluebells meant gratitude and everlasting love. They say that if you can turn a bluebell flower inside out without tearing it, then you'll find your one true love. But in the past, people have braved the mischievous fairies and the dangers of true love to find uses for our native springtime flower. The sticky sap was used to bind books together and glue feathers to arrows. And in Elizabethan times, they used to crush the bulbs to produce starch that would stiffen the roughs of collars and cuffs. All parts of a bluebell are actually toxic, so you'll get a really nasty stomachache if you eat one. But in the past, doctors have used them as a diuretic, which makes you want to urinate, or for their styptic effects, which will make you stop bleeding. Modern doctors are even looking into how they can be used to treat cancer. It's not just humans they benefit either. Since bluebells flower so early in the spring, they're an important food source for insects that also rise early. Woodland butterflies, bees and hoverflies all feed on the nectar inside the tube-shaped flowers. And in return, they do a bit of pollinating, carrying pollen from flower to flower for sexual reproduction. But sometimes bees take a sneaky shortcut, biting a hole in the base of the flower to get at the nectar without being weighed down by pollen. 
Without a doubt, these native bluebell woods are beautiful, but all is not as it seems. There is an imposter among us. Because except for in these rare woodlands, the chances are any bluebell you see is not our native variety. This is the interloper, the Spanish bluebell, which was introduced to the UK as an ornamental garden plant about 350 years ago. But the Spanish variety is less picky about where it lives than the English, and so before long it jumped over the garden wall and started growing in the wild, in hedgerows, on the sides of the road, and even on the edges of ancient woodland. If you're wondering how you can tell them apart, there are some big clues that you can look for. British bluebells are usually a dark violet blue colour, and their flowers are narrow tubes with delicately upturned tips. The pollen inside is a cream colour, and you'll have to take my word for it, but they smell amazing. Whereas the Spanish flowers are typically paler, and sometimes white or pink. The flowers are more open, conical bell shapes, with the petals more spread out. The pollen inside is blue, and there's no real scent at all. The stems of the Spanish bluebell are quite sturdy too, and the flowers are arranged all around it, and the leaves are quite wide, up to three centimetres across. Whereas the stems of the British bluebells are much more delicate and nod over in one direction, the flowers all grow on one side of that stem too. And the leaves are narrower as well, typically only about one centimetre across. Despite their physical differences, both the native and the imported bluebells can cross-pollinate to create a hybrid that shares characteristics from both the British and the Spanish flowers. Conservationists are worried that with the spread of the Spanish variety and this hybridisation, our native bluebells could be at risk. When they breed together, the genes become mixed and diluted, and over time we run the risk of losing the original bluebell altogether. A survey by volunteers of the wildflower charity Plant Life in 2003 found that one in six broadleaf forests already had a mixture of British, Spanish and hybrid bluebells. And scientists are still trying to understand the threat posed by the invasive species. A recent study planted British and Spanish bluebells together and let them breed naturally. Surprisingly, they found that the British bluebells were the ones that triumphed. Their pollen was more fertile and they produced more viable seeds. When they looked at the pollen of the Spanish variety, it was more often misshapen, meaning that it was probably less fertile. So perhaps the threat from the Spanish and the hybridisation isn't as great as we once thought, but that doesn't mean the bluebells are out of the woods yet. They're still under threat from habitat loss as more woodland is cut down, and from climate change, which threatens to transform these forests in a way that we can't predict. And of course, there's always the threat of humans. In springtime, as people rush to the forest to admire the blue carpets, they risk trampling the delicate flowers, and it can take years for the plant to recover. Picking and digging up wild bluebells is actually illegal under the 1981 Wildlife and Countryside Act, but that doesn't stop some unscrupulous bulb collectors from trying their luck to feed the ever-growing demand at garden centres for native bluebells. And while these are perennial plants coming back year after year, it actually takes five years for a fully grown plant to develop from a seed. So populations that have been damaged aren't going to bounce back very quickly. So we still need to do everything we can to protect this British icon. We can come to these forests to admire them, to look but not touch and never pick them. If you do, you face the wrath of the dark fairies and possibly the police, whichever you think is worse.